This episode of News Dump is sponsored by Away. And with Ricky still away <laughs> out in the Greek Isles, please welcome our old friend, Chloe Dykstra. The feminine side of Ricky, yeah. as I always say. Girl Ricky. Girl Ricky, yeah. Yeah, welcome back, Thank Chloe. Thank you very much, Elliot. Anyway, let's start off today's news by taking a good look at the streaming service Hellscape that awaits us all very soon. Ooh. First off, a new player has entered the game. Yes! Sorry, I got really excited. Cause Don't this, clap. <laughs> no, no, I'm just excited about the shit we're going to talk about because it's the most absurd shit. Yeah. So we've known for a while that uh, NBC Universal was going to be getting into the streaming game uh, with something. A few months back, a whole lot of people, including my wife, uh, freaked out at the news that the You're office. Really nailing the jokes. <laughs> I know. Wait, did you actually ital- you italicized it so you could remember to do the Borat joke? Th- don't tell them that this is scripted. <laughs> I want them to think I'm smart. A lot of people, including my wife, uh, freaked <laughs> out that The Office was going to be leaving Netflix in early 2020 because for a lot of people, Netflix is just the Office app. But the reason for that was, of course, that NBC Universal owns The Office, and they knew that The Office would be excellent bait for bringing people over to their upcoming service. And this week, that service got a name, a hell of a name, and a release date. It's called Peacock. (laughs) Sorry, we're good. And it's coming sometime in April 2020, which is just seven months from now. Seven months. And guess what, guys? They're not just taking the office, they're also taking Parks and Rec. Womp womp. And it's likely that in the next few years, a whole lot more movies and shows are going to become exclusive to Peacock once their, sorry, once their contracts elsewhere run out because NBC and Universal have quite the back catalog. Yeah, it goes back a few decades. It's pretty far back. Meanwhile, though, the two other huge old NBC streaming shows, Friends and Seinfeld, will live exclusively elsewhere for a while. Netflix recently dropped half a billion dollars for five-year exclusive rights to Seinfeld, and a few months back, Warner paid slightly less for a similar five-year deal to bring friends to HBO Max. And we will get to HBO Max in a bit. But back to The Office. Uh, it sounds like NBC Universal is seriously considering rebooting it in some way, which is definitely something it says to have mixed feelings about, but I don't think there's a lot of mixed feelings about this. Well, so I like think that the, they're all pretty much on the same page. I think a lot of people, if you say, hey, they're bringing back The Office, they'd be like, great, great. I love The Office. But you say reboot The Office. Well, I don't, the word reboot has kind of lost all meaning. It doesn't sound like they even know what the hell they want. Because, like, is, I, is Steve Carell in it? No. Then well, who? That's, remember what happened? I can't say definitively no, but like, there's no fucking way they're going to be able to afford, like, Steve Carell, Ed Helms, uh, John Krasinski now yeah, is Jack a Ryan, movie star. The guy so. doing the propaganda TV show. He's not. They can't afford him either. So like, what would it even be? Like, maybe they'll bring back, like, Angela. Remember the <laughs> Dawn girl replacement? Or sorry, Pam. I'm. So, I get the English and shut up. Don't, don't fucking do, don't cut. even, don't, I'm sorry. Dawn slash Pam. Yeah. The new Pam. Yeah. The, pre, the, the like, really pretty girl. What was her name? Do you remember? No. No. Let's keep going. <laughs> well, in an office, re- if that does happen, though, I have my doubts. It won't be for a while if it does. Meanwhile, Peacock also announced a whole lot of original content. Uh, the biggest news being that they're bringing back Battlestar Galactica. And Saved by the Bell, Uh, neither of which are full-on reboots, though they're calling both of them reboots because no one knows what that word means anymore. Uh, It's the new nerd culture. (laughs) Yeah, uh, the Battlestar Galactic series, it's going to focus on a new story that's in the same universe as the early 2000s show, and I believe Caprica. I never watched any of this stuff, but people like it, so I'm sorry. People really like the second yeah. The, yeah. The first show was beloved in a very different way. Yeah, the old, old one? The old, old one, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, so that's, you don't have to worry about them completely rebooting that. Uh, and the news Saved by the Bell also apparently exists in the same universe as the beloved 90s sitcom, but uh, let's just let the show's logline do the talking here. When California Governor Zach Morris gets into hot water for closing too many low-income high schools, he proposes they send the affected students to the highest performing schools in the state, including Bayside High. The influx of new students gives the overprivileged Bayside kids a much needed and hilarious dose of reality. So, okay. What? <laughs> Sorry. It's, I just, when I read that, I didn't know. I thought it was, it was a joke. It's got to be a fucking joke. This I thought someone snuck a joke in. It's so tone deaf and weird. Who, yes, who, okay. Anyway, look, 
We're gonna get through it because otherwise I'm just gonna make a lot of what who noises. So, so first off, the idea of Zach Morris, who is trash, bringing the sociopathic behavior of his youth to Sacramento, is a lot to take in. But weirdly, actor Mark Paul, I can never say his name, Mark Gossler. Paul Gossler, yeah. says he found out about this just like everyone else. Um, plus, he's under contract with ABC for a few projects for them, so it seems unlikely that Zach Morris will actually be appearing in the show. But <clears throat> both Mario Lopez, uh, who I forgot was actually an actor yeah. <laughs> one time, and El Elizabeth Berkley have producer credits, so they'll probably be making cameos. Anyway, I don't know who asked for this to happen. Uh, I don't think anybody did, but for some reason it's happening. Um, other Peacock originals include a drama miniseries called Angeline about, Ooh. hold on, Angeline, who I love, a real person who's most famous for driving around LA in a pink Corvette and buying lots of billboards of herself. So Angeline, I've seen maybe 25 to 50 times I growing up I, in LA. I think I only saw her like once or twice. Back when we had our office, you weren't there, but the office in West Hollywood. Oh from yeah, the cinema, that's around that which area. Which is right she on Santa Monica there, Boulevard. Yeah. I definitely saw her drive by a handful of times. It's like a rite of passage. But and I don't think anyone outside of LA cares. No, <laughs> but it's actually kind of an interesting story. So uh, sorry, I won't get too far into it. But like, so Angeline, she's like literally LA. Like mm -hmm. it's sort of it, like I said, it's a rite of passage. I actually got to meet her. I bought a shirt wow. off her, sixty dollars. But you know what? She's got to eat. I got yeah, totally understand. <laughs> But she, there was a whole thing that came out about somebody like really dove into her personal life, which she really tried to keep private, okay. and it became this huge thing. It's well, hold on. look it up. It's interesting. I promise. Okay, it is interesting. Oh, so I remember her not being too thrilled about that. No, it was. But now they're doing a show around it. I'm, so. I might. It might be. I mean, this is. It should be interesting to see what well, she's willing to put out there. So very. Know? It's a very local thing. She's been very <laughs> like, you know. Anyway, aside from the Angeline I'm show. I'm excited about it. All right. There's also a Brave New World series based on the Aldous Huxley novel, and it's produced by Grant Morrison, so that sounds good, yeah, actually. Yeah, that actually... Uh, there's a show called Dr. Death based on a true crime podcast of the same name. It's about a, a doctor who uh, keeps killing and maiming his patients on purpose. Cool. So... Exciting. Uplifting stuff. Yep. And uh, there's a reboot of the 80s sitcom Punky Brewster oh, for some reason. <clears throat> Punky Brewster grew up and she looks great. I will say that. I did not realize. Really? I, yeah. haven't, I haven't seen She's her. She's a very since. attractive woman. Good on her. So that's nice. Uh, also, the show AP Bio that got canceled earlier this year until all the angry fans complained loud enough and convinced NBC to bring it back. That's going on the Peacock thing. So it looks like in total there's going to be around 13 original shows launching in Peacock's first year or so. But you can bet that the biggest draw at the beginning is going to be the office and parks and recreation. After all of it. Because, uh, in yeah. everything. Well, yeah, it's, and it's like, I could buy the Blu-rays, but then I'd have to get up and, like, pull the disc out and put a new one in and, like, make room on a bookshelf for all of the, the, the Blu-rays. Yeah. It's just... So you just pay 15, 15 bucks a month. Yeah. And you're like, all right, all of the office and parks and rec. I want to be able to hit play, fall in and out of sleep for several hours on my couch, and wake up to with a Save by the play. Bell ad. Oh, yeah. Wake up to Zach Morris as the governor of California. This is the stupidest idea for a Ugh. show, anyway. Anyway, moving on to HBO Max news. The launch date and price for that service is still unclear, although it looks like it's probably going to launch in spring 2020 around the same time as Peacock and will probably cost around $15. That's a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot of money. Well, how much do you think Peacock is going to, how much is it? Uh, they said, uh, I think it was like 6 or $7. Oh, yeah. that, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Okay, well, um, they haven't actually made any huge announcements, uh, announcements about the original content, but this week it was announced that the old Adult Swim series, The Boondocks, remember The Boondocks? Hell yes, I remember Good The stuff. Boondocks. Stuff. Getting two new seasons on HBO Max, premiering around a year from now. Was, that's cool news. Nice. Um, I want them to bring back uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, but that's never going to happen. It's fine. <clears throat> they might. I wouldn't mind if they rebooted that. I think we're at a stage where all the things I enjoyed as a young person are, uh, they've hit uh, reboot cycle. They're rebootable. Which, you know, makes me feel great. A little spooky, Knowing right? that I'm old enough for things in my youth to... Rebooting The Office is the most surreal mm, Don't thing. do it. Uh, meanwhile, it was also announced this week that J.J. Abrams and his company Bad Robot have signed a massive $500, uh, $500 deal. Whoa, we did it. <laughs> $500 million deal with Warner to develop shows and movies for both HBO Max and everything else that Warner owns. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, Abrams actually turned down an even more lucrative offer from Apple because it would uh, have meant developing stuff for Apple TV Plus and nothing else. 
Uh, plus, a good chunk of Abrams' career has involved existing intellectual property like Star Wars, Star Trek, Westworld, and Apple not having any existing IP was also reportedly a deal breaker. I think he made the right decision. I think he did too. We'll see how the new shows go. I think they he'll look, be fine. They look interesting. Yeah, I I was not interested in Apple TV at all until they started showing trailers for it. Nah, I'm like, yeah. Shit. I might need to just like wait till all of these first seasons are over, get it for a month, binge all of them, and then cancel. Yeah. But not a bad idea. That's how they get you. That's that's the way to do it though. Just forget just that you have a subscription. Constantly sign up and cancel. That's <laughs> true. So we're all gonna have to do soon. But yeah, in general, it sounds like HBO Max's bread and butter, at least at the beginning, is going to be the absolutely massive library of content that Warner has across all their various brands, like Machinima. <laughs> Just kidding. They're not. They they don't even know what Machinima is. But uh, TBS, TNT, Cartoon Network, Adult Swim, The CW, DC Entertainment, CNN, Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Cinemax, TMZ, Turner Classic Movies, and of course, HBO. Uh, plus Warner's entire film library. Plus exclusive North American rights to much of the BBC's content library. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that's worth um, it. There also there will be original content, but they're in less of a rush. Apparently, compared to like Apple, who are starting with nothing. Uh, also, in a bit of news about Apple, uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger only just last week stepped down as an Apple board member, which is kind of weird. I mean, there's a huge conflict of interest there now that both companies are, uh, are going to be aggressively vying for territory in the streaming landscape. So, got to imagine the last couple meetings. Like, <laughs> Why are you here, Bob? Bob, get out. Don't just go. Bob, go home, Bob. Leave go the room. Your family. Anyway, both of those services, Apple and Disney, launch very soon. Uh, Apple TV Plus launches November 1st for $5 a month. And Disney Plus launches November 12th for $7 a month. Uh, in terms of original content, though, Apple will premiere five scripted series on day one, while Disney Plus is just going to have The Mandalorian and <laughs> apparently a new high school musical series. Cool. So that's the future that awaits us just a few months down the line. And in addition to HBO Max, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, Peacock, there's of course Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, CBS All Access, and a hundred other more niche services to choose between. We've taken cable TV, fucking mutilated it, and then rebuilt it to be even more fucking annoying. Yeah. And rather than dwell on this and risk having a panic attack, let's go to an ad break. This episode is sponsored by Away, thoughtful luggage for modern travel. Away started with the perfect suitcase, crafted with features that make travel more seamless, and now they offer a range of essentials that solve real travel problems. So all you have to think about is where you're headed next. Because getting away means getting more out of every trip to come. Away knows that everyone has a different travel style. That's why they make their carry-on in an array of colors, two sizes, and two materials. A strong yet flexible polycarbonate and an anodized aluminum. These suitcases are super lightweight and durable and built to last. And Ricky actually messaged me while he's on his honeymoon telling me how much he's enjoying his Away suitcase. So that's a real-world testimonial for you. And if you want to give these suitcases a try yourself, there's a 100-day trial period, so you can really test it out on the road. And when you decide to keep it, the lifetime warranty means they'll repair or replace your bag if it ever gets damaged. These suitcases are basically all the features that you wish you had in your luggage in one place. There's great wheels, there's a built-in battery for charging your devices, there's a built-in TSA lock, there's a laundry bag, and different ways to compartmentalize all your stuff. For $20 off the purchase of a suitcase, visit awaytravel.com slash ITDaily and use promo code ITDaily, all one word, during checkout. Again, for $20 off a suitcase that you are going to love, go to awaytravel.com slash ITDaily and use promo code ITDaily at checkout. Okay, cool. My sanity has returned. And uh, in movie casting news... James Gunn, of course, made the best of a shitty situation uh, by first losing the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise over some uh, seriously questionable <laughs> old tweets. I will admit, well, yikes. Yikes. But then he gained the Suicide Squad franchise because DC is desperate. Uh, but then he also got Guardians of the Galaxy back after Disney let the heat die down a little bit and was just like, all right, it's fine now. Mm -hmm. and last week, he announced the full cast for his attempt at salvaging the Suicide Squad franchise, and it is a doozy. Just look at this list of names that he posted to Instagram. In addition to returning cast members Jai Courtney, Joel Kinnaman, Margot Robbie, and Viola Davis, we've got Idris Elba, John Cena, Nathan Fillion, Taika Waititi, uh, Michael Rooker, Sean Gunn. I don't know why I'm counting on my fingers because this is so many people. You Falula. Run out of fingers. Falula's in yeah, it. Fucking Falula. Falula actually did get a 
I mean, he he was very well diversified, but Machinima was one of the the first. For, yes, sure. I edited his show. Good job, Flula. Um, um, it's we're still going. Peter Capaldi's in it. Cool. Pete Davidson, Steve Agee, who's my favorite comedian, I love by the way. He's the most wonderful person. He's really good. Uh, and a ton more names of people you probably recognize from elsewhere. I mean, it's a lot. Uh, though, as James Gunn does note in the description of his post, don't get too attached. So They're going to die. They're, they're probably going to die. Um, anyway, it will be a while before we're able to see if this Suicide Squad manages to get it right. Uh, it comes out August 6th, 2021. The first one is still, I think, the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Wait, okay. Suicide <laughs> Squad or Batman v Superman? Suicide Squad. Really? Like, Batman v Superman actually had parts that I enjoyed. Overall, it was it was not good, but there was parts where I was like, oh, man, they they were close. Yeah. Suicide Squad was not close. Suicide it, Squad, I was just like, what the fuck? Like, it feels like they shot five movies and it, like... It feels with, like a YouTube video. Yeah. It's, it's like a really cool it's YouTube so, video that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's all over also, the place. Also, Cara Delevingne. Yeah. Just so many things about it. It's, it was one of those movies where literally within minutes, I was like, oh, God. There's this no is, way. There's this, no hope. This, there's yeah. no hope. It's all. It's all movie. over. I fell asleep in Batman v Superman when they started talking about Martha. Yeah, it was. That was it. I just took a nap. I woke a, up in the credits. It was great. It was one of those movies, and and Man of Steel was kind of like that for me too, where it's full of action, but somehow it's still boring. Because mm-hmm. I fell asleep in Man of Steel in the theaters, and I was like, is something wrong with me? Do I need to see a doctor? Superman's always really hit or miss. Hot take. Hot take. <laughs> Shut up. In other casting news, it uh, looks like the latest attempt at revisiting the Ghostbusters will have a lot of familiar faces. Uh, Dan Aykroyd confirmed to Joe Rogan this Love week that, guy. that uh, he'll be returning as Ray Stance. And uh, Ernie Hudson revealed that he would be back as Winston Zeddemore in an extremely <laughs> weird but cool way. <laughs> so he did it through a cameo video for a fan's birthday. Now, cameo, if you don't know, is a weird social network where you can pay celebrities from the A-list down to the D-list to record video messages for you or, you know, someone you want to send a message to. So Ernie Hudson recorded a very nice birthday message for a guy named Mike, and in it he revealed that he's currently working on the new Ghostbusters Was he just, like, in front of a truck that just said, like, Ghostbusters? He was in his costume. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. And, like, a lot of these cameo people, they record, like, 20 seconds. He recorded, like, a... Three minute long message. Good man. Seems like a good guy. Good man. Uh, meanwhile, both Annie Potts and Sigourney Weaver revealed months ago that they'd be involved in some way. So Rad. the odd man out at this point is Bill Murray, since Harold Ramis passed away a few years back. So Rest in peace. he's probably not going to be in it. <clears throat> probably not. Bill Murray appeared along with Ackroyd, Weaver, and Hudson in the 2016 Ghostbusters. So it would make sense that he might return. Although the opposite could be true, given how poorly that movie was received by some people. Some people. I still haven't seen it. It's it's. I'm not even going to say my thing because I'm scared. Ricky said he he went in with very low expectations and was pleasantly surprised. That's exactly it. And I I heard a similar thing from a lot of people. It was a little, like, there was a little bit of, like, it it was Feige, right? No, it was Feig. Yeah, Kevin Feig. Paul Paul, I always get their names together. The Feige and the The Feig. The Feig and the Feig. It was Paul Feig. Um, Paul Feig definitely felt like he was going, fuck you guys. Yeah. There were, like, little moments in there. Other than that, it yeah, was not, it was nice. It was I'll, I'll get around to it someday. I mean, like, my stance on it is just like, even if it is pleasantly okay, it probably shouldn't have been made. I mean, I no, I, <laughs> I agree. I don't like, I hated the whole thing where they're like, we're going to take this thing and then switch it out for women. Yeah, like, Bam, why? feminism. Just come up with a new idea. Yeah. And it's like, it's not even about the gender swap thing. There's just like so many good things getting remade, yeah, and not as well. Well, I in some way feel like that's a, a little, like, it's I don't, it's almost a little sexist just to just throw women at a movie and be like, look, we did it. I agree. That's that's how I feel. Like, and, and, how and I'm is, not saying how is it empowering when you take something like an established male franchise and you just gender bend it? Like, seems a little low effort. That's, that's uh, it's a little low, low hanging fruit. I don't fruit. know. I'm sure they had good intentions. But it was but, fun. It was a fun movie. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Oh, it's still me. Anyway, (laughs) unlike that movie, which was a very loose reboot of the franchise, Ghostbusters 2020 is a direct sequel to the original movies, and it is directed by Jason Reitman, whose dad actually directed those movies. So, 
As for the plot, it sounds like it'll focus on a family played by Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, and Kenna Grace, who moved to a small town. Uh, I feel like that's the beginning of every ghost yeah. movie. Uh, <laughs> a teaser clip released back in January showed the old Ecto-1 station wagon sitting in a barn, but it's unclear as of now how exactly this is all connected to the original movies. The July 2020 release date is less than a year away, though, so it shouldn't be long before we find out more. Yay. And if they fuck it up again, let's all just agree to stop. Yeah. Just let it die. Let it die, guys. And moving on now in an update to something that I talked about last week, actress Felicity Huffman, who got caught up in that Operation Varsity Blues college admission scandal, just best name for a police operation. <laughs> yes. uh, she was sentenced last Friday to 14 days in prison for paying a fake charity to alter her daughter's SAT That's scores. Fuck. The prosecutors had asked for a month in prison, so it looks like they split the difference. But while I said last week that another defendant would also be sentenced, uh, our old boss, <laughs> Steven Sempervivo, uh, looks like I was wrong. Actually, uh, he was originally scheduled to be sentenced that day, but it was pushed back two weeks or so. Uh, but given that prosecutors wanted one month for Huffman and she got two weeks, uh, prosecutors want Steven Sempervivo to go to prison for 18 months because he absolutely did way more than Huffman. So if he ends up getting the similar split the difference treatment, uh, that's nine months in prison, which I'm fine with, but I guess we'll find out in a week or so. It's, this is the most exciting saga yeah, of just, the year. Yeah, it's just, fuck, she only got 14 weeks, like, for 14 days. Yeah. Like, there's so many people in prison for much longer. Oh, yeah, there's for much... for very dumb reasons, too. Like, the, so... the justice in this country is completely fucked, oh, but, uh... Shit. Yeah, oh. uh, we don't really need to get into this, but... We could. Uh, <sighs> Shane Gillis, the, the SNL guy, got he got Ooh. cast. They're like, welcome our new cast member. And then within like an hour, people dug up wait, clips of his podcast. Wait, we're going to read his apology tweet. <laughs> can we so please? We can. Yeah, so this guy, yeah, he got cast in SNL. Big deal for comedians. He got cast on the same day that their first ever Asian main cast member got cast. So that was a big deal for them. Uh, within about an hour, people found clips of him saying some uh, uh, some things that you could kind of say we're pretty fucking racist about about Asian people in particular, which is just the cherry on top. Uh, he and, said slurs. Uh, he said, on slurs. Yeah, he did slurs. Uh, the biggest thing for me, it was just like, I'm just like, if there was jokes in there, no, it would I be know. one thing. I'd be like, if if he was actually funny, like it would be easier to be like, ah, yeah. That's but the it, whole thing about comedy, right? Yeah. Like if you're going to, what did I say? It's kind of like if you're going to, um, what's a good example? Hold on. I'm going to think of this. If you're going to take on like a heavyweight champion, yeah. having never boxed before, and you're gonna go down. Like that's the thing about like racist topics. Yeah. You have to like frame that in a in a good way to actually get through them and actually but if you're just fucking saying slurs, it's not comedy. Yeah, the clip it, it literally it just sounded like conversations I overheard in college between like college. drunk bros. Like, High school. Just that not, shit was Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah, after, like, a couple days, SNL was like, actually, no, <laughs> he's not going to be joining the show. But uh, yeah, please, please do a dramatic reading of uh, this apology. It feels ridiculous for comedians to be making serious public statements, but here we are. I'm a comedian who was funny enough to get SNL. That cannot be taken away. Of course, I wanted an opportunity to prove myself at SNL but I understand it would be too much of a distraction. I respect the decision they made. I'm honestly grateful for the opportunity. I was always a mad TV guy anyway. All right. So I don't know, like, of course the whole like cancel culture fucking discourse is happening. I, I my stance right now is I think, well, first of all, the better thing would just be not hiring him in the first place, but, <laughs> Uh, at that point, you you own it. Keep him on the show. And I think it probably, the way, like, knowing how it works in the writer's room at SNL and, like, all the weird fucking yeah. clicky alliances backstage, like, I don't think he would have lasted more than a season because when you go into a new job having kind of alienated yourself from other people and made yourself toxic, like, I don't think he would have got on SNL a can't whole afford lot. to lose their 10 viewers that they have left, so... It's not a good show, too. Like, the, the whole discourse around this, I'm just like, we're all acting like SNL's still, like, relevant at all. Like, SNL fucking sucks. It is... It hasn't been funny for a while. Like, mm -hmm. every once in a while, there'll be, like, one sketch that I'll see on Twitter or something and be like, that was good. But the rest of it is just, like, fucking Alec... 
Alec Baldwin in a shitty fucking Trump costume just like like where's the joke? And yeah. Trump. Look. Ah, uh, yeah. So I, I was I always really a Mad TV guy anyway, so I mean Mad TV. I was, was I actually loved Mad TV. I was a Mad TV kid. Look Looking back, it was not good, but like No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I I like eighth grade me thought it was the fucking funniest thing in the world. Yep. It was great at yeah. the time. Maybe they don't really they don't really uh age well, but... Yeah. Also, another thing, Shane Gillis is going to be fine. People are like, you ruined his career. I'm like, no. I fucking guarantee that within six months, this guy, he's going to get on Joe the... Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, he's going to be on Rogan. Like, he's... he's. This is going to be great for his career. It'll probably be better so, than if he just quietly joined SNL. Yeah, I, I think so. I think he's going to be absolutely fine. The face of cancel culture. Mm-hmm. Shane Gillis. Good job. Anyways, that's it for this week's news dump. Oh. when This is going up today, right? Yeah. You know what tomorrow is, right? Friday? It's Area 51 raid day. Oh my god. I'd forgotten because we, we've been wow. talking about it for months. Tomorrow's uh, the day. So, like, actually, I think today, we're filming this Thursday, they're having the, like, uh, do-over party in Las Vegas because that party... Well, so the, the party... Oh, yeah, yeah. The party and Rachel, the, the, the two hosts, they broke up. Not amicably. One of them is having their party, their Such Bud Light party in show. Vegas. But the shit show one is happening this weekend. The one that everyone is saying people are probably going to die at. Yep. So that's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> me not like, I'm sorry for saying people may be dying of thirst in the desert. Dude, is you're going to regret that. You should, you should, you're going to regret I'm gonna that I'm going to get so fucking canceled. Die. Oh, boy. Can you believe this guy said it was funny that these people are dying out in the desert? Well... No way to edit around it now. That's it, you guys. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, keep your keep your eye on that hashtag this weekend. <laughs> I know I will. Um, Chloe, what are, what are you doing these days? You, you... I'm hanging out. I work for a hard drive, so I do hard drive stuff. And uh, right now, I love the hard drive. It's fun. It's 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 probably my one of my favorite jobs to do. So you you <laughs> uh, you work at the same company as my favorite presidential candidate, Ace Watkins. Ace, yeah, Ace, good old Ace Watkins. Don't forget to vote, you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, tomorrow I'll see. I'll be at the uh, Area Area Fifty One raid. Are you going? No, I was okay. gonna for a minute, and then I got. I saw the military thing, and I was like, "Oh no." Yeah, it's probably best to. It's embarrassing enjoy it for me to even say that I was. I just wanted to see the. Well, I considered it for a moment. There was like a second. Yeah, me and Ricky actually we talked about it. Like, well, should we go? It's just like. Mm, yeah. I don't know. Not worth it, you guys. Yeah. Well, um, everyone, have a great weekend tomorrow. Weekly Weird News is going up. Um, watch some other shows that I did this week, including a eulogy for Movie Pass, a very straight-faced, weird thing that I did. And uh, thank you, Chloe, for joining me. Thanks, Elliot. Thank you for having me. Bye bye. See you on the other. <laughs> Wait. See you. On- Shit, I fucked it up. See you on the other. Ah, I cannot talk. Okay. See you on the other side of the raid. Good job.